<laughs> Recording. Recording. Man, I wish I was on a plane to Cancun right now. Uh, yeah, no kidding. Instead, I'm choosing between should I hurry up and scramble and get some work done at my house, or should I work on building my business, or should I spend some time with my family? I think we should just do like Slingerland does and don't do any of it. Just take off. <laughs> Disappear, right? <laughs> oh, man. Isn't that the truth, huh? Work, family, play. It's all all involved here at EFM. <laughs> Somehow, there isn't enough time for all of it. So how do you choose what you need to do? Good question. I'd, I want to know the answer, Nehemiah. So I hope you have some <laughs> words of wisdom for me today. Oh boy. Well, hey, welcome back to another episode of the Entrepreneurial Family Man Podcast. I'm Chris Niemeyer here with my good friends, Michael McGreevy and Christopher McCluskey. Jamie Slingerland, we miss you. Tough that you have to be on a plane to Cancun with your family, but somebody's got to do it. So why not you, right? <laughs> Oh, I don't blast, think he's dude. probably missing us very much right <laughs> now. <laughs> Not at all, but you are here in spirit, my friend. And we're just four guys who are crazy about our wives, we love our kids, and we want to kill it in business. And as we talk about it, and we'll talk more about today, this podcast is a place to discuss the healthy tension that exists when you've got family on one hand, your, your marriage, your kids, you got business and business opportunities on the other hand and, and life and lifestyle and travel and all this kind of stuff. So how do you live with that tension? How do you navigate in certain seasons, certain chapters of your life, what needs to take priority, maybe for a short term time period to really address, okay, this is what's happening, honey, in our household. Here's what's happening in my business. And, uh, and so let's just talk about that, guys, because this is a, a sticky subject where Let's be frank, if we are living this lifestyle, there's going to be this tension because we want to do well in all these areas. So how do you balance that? Michael, talk to us about why we're even discussing this topic uh, and some real life examples that are going on in our own households. <laughs> well, it's because I have a problem. <laughs> this is on, Raising my hand too. Yes. This is on me. I have too much going on in my life. And this didn't happen to me. I chose to have too much going on in my life. And I didn't uh, put guardrails on that. And so now I've, I often find myself in a position where I'm torn between spending time with my family, between getting another project done, which I added into the mix and just keeping life afloat in general. So this hit me pretty hard just this past weekend, because I had plans to get a bunch of work done on this house. <laughs> that I'm working on and trying to get ready for my family. And uh, then, you know, I look over at Lydia and the kids and I know they've been together all week as I've been working on building my business. And, and uh, I'm like, Oh, why don't you come out to the house with me? We can bring uh, some snacks and set a little spot up for the kids and they can have a good time. And then I can work downstairs and it'll all be great. Like in my mind, right. It's all going to come together. <laughs> and, Foolish boy. <laughs> McCluskey's no rookie. He knows what's <laughs> going on here. So anyway, I get out to this job site. We set it all up. And then as Lydia and I are just sitting with our kids on this blanket, I'm getting ready to go to work. We look at each other. And it was one of those moments where we just thought, wow, these are the memories that we're always going to cherish as, as we look back on these years. And what a moment this is. Sitting in our soon-to-be new house, hanging out with the kids. They're eating snacks. We're all talking, walking around, checking out the place. And it just hit me that I got to choose between either hanging out with my family right now and being present or getting some work done. And I'm just not going to be able to get work done right now. And so fortunately, I was able to choose my family in that scenario, but it's not always the clear choice. Am I coming across crazy? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what are you talking about, McGreevy? You're completely off your rocker. I wasn't looking rocker. at the chat feature. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's, I mean, that's, there's times when we have to choose work as a means to take care of our family. And Chris, you were talking about earlier, Nehemiah, about kind of similar situation, but we're required a different response. 
Yeah, man. It's, it's funny, Michael, you and I are like in tandem right now going on these adventures with our family and some real estate stuff and big remodel projects. Uh, in fact, literally we're kind of coinciding. I mean, I'm, I'm calling a drywall guy the same week you're calling a drywall guy. I'm calling a, a insulation guy the same week your insulation guy's finishing up. So it's kind of funny, but yeah, we, you know, we bought a property um, that we were really excited about and it's, it's going to take uh, a lot of effort and it's been taking a lot of effort the last few months. I'm, I'm general contracting it, owner builder myself, lining up a ton of uh, subs to do the work and, uh, and it's 40 minutes away each way, sometimes 45 minutes to, to get there and back. Well, these last few weeks, I have been there just about every other day, if not daily, sometimes. Sometimes we'll take the kids, and that can be a, a little bit of a hassle when, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to get their schoolwork done and, you know, running over landmines of nails and everything else that's, <laughs> that's around there. And so we're toward the end. I mean, this is kind of like 11th hour this, this past weekend and week. Well, Alicia homeschools our kids. They're going through, you know, a history of kind of the colonial time period and presidents. And there's this, uh, this homeschool, kind of a few homeschool days up in the Virginia area uh, that happens this week and in the fall. We were planning to go in the fall, but we just have realized you know, there's, just a, there's enough tension, and enough time that daddy needs to spend to finish this house project over these next few days with all the appointments we have lined up. She just came and said, you know what, maybe it's better that. I just take the kids. We go up to Virginia. My wife is a seven. She loves road trips. She loves experiences and travel and all that kind of stuff. So for her, it's like, no problem. I'll drive 12 hours with four kids. Uh, <laughs> that's just how she rolls. I, I don't get it either, but uh, love her for it. And so we just made a determination. You know what? I'm going to bring a sleeping bag and an airbed up to the house. And I'll be kind of working nonstop here for the next four or five days, peppering in quick, quick stops over to Starbucks to grab on Wi-Fi and get some work done. Um, but it just made sense in this period of time where there are times we've got to choose what's best overall for, for our family. And this was a period where overall for our family on the outside, it looked like, well, this is a, a work, a work environment. Like you're choosing work over your family. No, for our family in this chapter, there was going to be less tension of daddy having to come back and forth and burn the candle at both ends. And, you know, maybe, maybe lose my cool sometimes as a result of that to just say, this is best for everyone involved. And she's excited because she'll be able to come back and see a house that's nearly completed with, you know, furniture and uh, cabinets going up in the kitchen and flooring down and the walls painted. Like it's going to be transformed within just a few days where we couldn't have done that. If, if they'd stayed. So totally different type of situation. Um, but, but yet one that I think requires us to live within that tension. Well, Nehemiah, I think you hit the, the key center point of the entire dynamic tension that we live in as men. And that is when you said it's about family, everything we're struggling with is not work or family work is for family. Why do we work? I mean, it's not because we just love going out and, you know, killing it in the workforce. We do our work because that's how we provide for our family. So the whole thing is not some crazy false dichotomy. Everything is around the dynamic tension of being totally focused on this family. I am crazy about my wife. I love my kids. I want to kill it in business, but it's not just because I get some ego rush out of killing it in business. When I do, my family, my wife, I get to bless like crazy, and the ministry and the impact of our family goes far and wide because of that. But it's not an either or, though it typically feels like an either or. So I think both of your examples really illustrated that when those things, you know, butt up against each other, Mike, you, you bring in the, you planning on going for a work day at the house, but then bringing the kids and Lydia with you and then going, ah, forget the work. We're just going to be a family here. And Chris, you're doing the, the exact opposite. You're going to be there at the house and have the kids around. Nah, we'll just let, let Alicia take the kids and, and I'm going to only be here working on it. They both illustrate that there can be very good and right and proper and beautiful ways of resolving that tension that are different, polar opposite different, depending on our discernment of what's best for the family at that moment. 
That's so good, McCluskey. And that's so hard to figure out, too, because both seem very, very important in the moment at times. And sometimes it's helpful for me to, to know a little bit more about how I'm wired, too. You know, we love the Enneagram and different personality profiles as well. But me being a seven and knowing that I tend to live in the spontaneous world, sometimes I need to get to work and I need to stop playing and stop having a good time and commit to the plan that I laid out and seeing that through. And like for you, Nehemiah, we kind of joke that you're that executive guy and you're driving things forward. And maybe for you, it's sometimes, well, maybe I need to turn that off sometimes and do a little bit more playing. So that, that's been helpful for me too, to, to just be aware of who I am and what I tend to do most often. And, you know, my wife is really helpful in reminding me who I am in those moments as well. <laughs> Thank God for our wives to help us with that right. awareness, right? Yeah. And just that, that conversation that has to happen, right, between, between the two to have the awareness of, okay, there are some opportunities here. And how do we, how do we work through this tension together? Because, uh, Michael, I know there's many days where you do go up to the house and get your work done and, and then you come home and sometimes the kids – will come with you for weekends. Sometimes they don't, but this is just one of those periods where this is, it made sense. Chris, how, how do you, how have you approached this in your own life or examples you might have with, uh, as it comes to work and family and just sort of living in this tension? Sure. Sure. Well, since I, since I know that it is all about family, once I got that clear, that helped me a lot years ago that wait, wait a minute, this isn't, you know, me being bad daddy. If I'm off, you know, making money for the family. It's, it's all being a good daddy as long as my heart's in the right place. But once I got clear on that, then what I looked at was any of those tension points where you have to say, well, I've only got a finite amount of energy and time and focus and money, and I've got to put them toward one thing right now, which excludes the other from getting its investment of time and energy and focus and money. I recognize, okay, that means there is going to be a perpetual challenge with regard to debt indebtedness on our part as husbands and fathers. There's financial debt for, you know, if, if you don't grow the business as it needs to, the, the business is going to be upside down financially. But there's relationship debt. There's experience debt. We missed that opportunity. There's seasonal debt. We can't get those years back or whatever. There are lots of um, experiences we can have of being in debt for something because we didn't give it whatever time, attention, focus, and money it needed at that time. This last weekend, we went out tromping here on the farm with several of my older kids and my one little grandson, and we were tromping around what we call the gnome trail. It's a, it's a trail that goes around our duck pond, and we've placed little gnomes at various places that you kind of forget where they are or we'll go in and move them sometimes and so part of the fun of walking the trail is looking to find the gnomes we were walking the gnome trail because when we moved here 20 plus years ago my brother and I had all kinds of ideas of what we could do for that trail and we had some really cool ideas like how we were going to set in some we've got some flagstone that was saved from some of the foundations of some of the buildings around here. We were going to cut into one of the banks of the, the kind of a clay type uh, hillside and put some old looking stone steps going up that portion. Hmm. And then there's another place where it goes across a draw that, that, you know, when it rains, the water runs down into the pond. Uh, we were going to make a stone bridge across that, you know, and it's just going to be like, like uh, this old three Billy Groats gruff kind of a stone bridge or something. We just had all kinds of, well, none of those happened. The trail's there, although it's pretty overgrown, but none of the rest of that stuff happened. So I'm walking around, I'm having a wonderful time playing with my family, but it's reminding me that, you know, 15 years ago or so, McCluskey, you had all kinds of ideas here. He even talked about them with the kids and they didn't happen. Did I blow it as a dad? Well, I mean, listeners here know that that was during the dark years. That was when I was so sick. So a lot of the indebtedness that I had to accept during that time was, the most important thing is keeping us on the farm, keeping a roof over our heads, you know, at least tucking the kids into bed at night or reading them a story or some kind of a connection point. Like the, the discernment, the uh, evaluation of the finiteness of all of us, whether you're sick or not, we, we've only got so much energy and health and all, um, says that sometimes you just have to accept that in a season, you're not going to be able to balance this tension out. Some things are not going to get done and you can't go back in time and recapture them. It just didn't get done. 
but I believe in taking that walk that I chose the proper places to put my focus. Tough as the debt was to live with, I chose the more important things of keeping us here on the farm and at least pouring into the kids. And what was really cool was as we were tromping around there and I'm listening to the conversations of my now, you know, upper 20s, knocking on 30 year old kids. And they're saying the same things about what we could do with this, this little trail that we said 20 plus years ago. They're almost the age that I was back then. And I realized, you know, that means maybe it's not lost. Maybe it was just for another season and maybe it'll be me coming alongside of my grown kids making something else happen. Wow. I love the juxtaposition there that you laid of the relational debt and the financial debt and then just the visual of redeeming an idea years ago and bring it to this generation, bring it to, I'm just envisioning and I know, I know we'll see pictures of this on Facebook of <laughs> <Yeah>. you, <laughs> you, your kids and your grandkids working on this together. I mean, that's like a multi-generational idea that you just had to press pause on for a while I think so. because to your point, you chose family in that situation those many years ago. Now you're seeing the, the benefit and the fruit of that growing family and they get to rally around this idea that you had those, those many years ago. So I love that. It's beautiful. Yeah, it was pr pretty cool. And, and just to clarify your point, you chose family. Well, yeah, all of them were choosing family. That, that, that I think is really important for each of us guys to understand. We are not one of these dads who, you know, there's a lot of songs written about dad almost selling his soul to the office, you know, daddy, we don't need another nice car. We just need you here at home and all. Well, sometimes, yeah, dads can make a, a bad choice there. But the reality is, if, if our heart is for our marriage and our family, there's not ever going to be enough of us to go around and cover all of these tension points. There won't be. So we need to pay attention to that and recognize in the end, the filter we need to gauge all of it through is what's best for the family now in this situation. You might not get the same answer tomorrow. That's great, McCluskey, because I, I don't know a man who is engaged in his family that doesn't struggle with this a great deal. Like a daily struggle with this choice of what do I do? I have a limited amount of time and I feel fragmented already. I feel like I'm not putting enough into all these areas already. So I have to choose something that I'm going to put most of my energy and time into. And I love how you framed it. This is a daily decision. What does my family need right now? That's a refreshing line to hear because it almost feels like you have to create a philosophy around this of, I have a system and I'm going to spend this much time here. And I'm going to spend this much time there. We all know that doesn't work. We've, we've all tried that in different ways. So to ask yourself in each moment, what does my family need right now? What's best for my family right now? I love that question. That's a great question to, uh, to wrap up with, Michael. And as we do many times here, we ask, what about you? You know, when it comes to living out this tension and living with this idea of, of truly an intentional life, of a focus on your marriage, on your family, and on your business, how those all work together, where does your family come into play each and every day? You know, maybe there's a discussion with you and your wife to sit down and say, how are we doing in these areas right now? And with, with what we have in front of us, opportunities, maybe it's just literally your calendar. Where can I put my family first? Sit with that question every day. What is best for my family today? 